Hi everyone, this is Matthew Janner for Card Runners, and I'm here with Attorney Theory Part 4, 30 and lower big blind stack play, and we're going to continue right where we left off. Now, if you remember, in the last video, we discussed how when the button min raises and the big blind goes all in with very little stack depth, the button can call with his entire range. So that was Snowy's range advice to call with absolutely everything that he opened with preflop. And we can look at what that range looks like right here. So these are all the hands that the button opened with, and he's calling a jam with all those hands against a big blind jam. Now think for a minute. If the button is always calling a big blind jam, so the big blind has no fold equity on his jam, what should the big blind jamming range look like? Should it be a linear range, a polarized range, or a condensed range? I think this is going to be very important later. Should it be a linear range, a polarized range, or a condensed range? And the answer, of course, is is if the button's not folding anything to the jam, you're only going to want to get more money in the pot if you're the big blind with your better hands. So let's go back to the situation where we saw the preflop advice. The big blind was only jamming with its strongest hands because it knew it was going to get called. So that's why you see it going all in with all the strongest hands. And this does look like a very linear range. It's not a polarized range. And you can also probably see I, I really doubt that it's correct to use like all these mixed strategies. I think it's just snowy, not really knowing. So you're just going to want to jam all the better stuff, right? Like I highly doubt ace nine suited is as profitable as a call as is a three bet all in, even though snowy is suggesting a mixed strategy, but you can take the important conceptual message home. And we didn't need snowy to tell us this, but if the button's never folding to a three bet all in, then you only want to three bet all in with your good hands. Oh, what's that? It's a perfect transition to concept number three, three betting out of position with little stack depth. So we understand when we'd use a linear three betting range preflop. So when we have no calling range, so if we have no calling range, then why would we, you know, we wouldn't three bet a polarized range, right? A polarized range is like some really good stuff and some less good stuff. Well, if we have no calling range, we're just going to three bet only the best hands. So that happens like in some small blind spots and cash games. If button opens and I'm in the small blind in a cash game, I don't have a calling range there because it's too vulnerable to the big blind squeezing. And it also doesn't usually play well to be out of position multi-way. So I only three bet or fold in the small blind against a button open. So that range is linear. I might as well just use all the good hands. It makes no sense to polarize it. And then we also do it when our opponent has no folding range. This one could get a little bit more complicated, but I think it's pretty much safe to say unless you're being like really nitty about some spots, if your opponent's never going to fold, you're just going to put all the money in with all the good hands preflop. And even saying like a good hand can be a little bit confusing because we talked about robust and non-robust equity. But for the most part, the big blind three betting range we just saw was a linear range. It was just, hey, let's put all the money in with the best hands because our opponent never folds. So we'll do this when we have very little stack depth. Now, when should we be using a polarized three betting range specifically from the big blind? So we already know we used we use a polarized three betting range when we're in position and we have a calling range. So like for 100 big blind stacks in a cash game, if the cutoff opens and we're in the button, most people, myself included, prefer to have a calling range there. So they end up three betting a polarized range. Some really good stuff and some stuff that has robust equity but doesn't play that well as a call. So that's a polarized three betting range. But when do you use a polarized three betting range from the big blind? Because as we just saw, we did not use a polarized three betting range when we were shallow. Polarized big blind three betting ranges. We use a polarized three betting range when our three bet actually has some fold equity. This requires the stack depth to make a reasonable size three bet. This is so important right here. We're going to talk about it a lot more and then I'm eventually going to make some ranges. But you have to have the stack depth to make a three bet size that will give you some fold equity to want to use a polarized three betting range. Because remember, if our opponent's never going to fold, we're just going to make the pot bigger with all our good hands. Whereas we need the opponent to fold to be like, hey, let's, you know, let's three bet this kind of weakish hand because we can make our opponent fold something that does really well against us. 